So your users are experiencing a weird bug and you wish you could just see how the operation flow went from the client to the backend and then back to the client. You need distributed tracing. Let me show you how. Hello there, I'm Lazar from the DevRel team here at Sentry. Distributed tracing is just like regular tracing, but it follows the operation flow and it combines every transaction created along the way into one trace for you. For example, the flow starts on the client side when a user performs a UI action. A transaction is created and also a trace along the way. When the client makes the HTTP request to the backend, it also sends the trace ID in the headers. So the backend transaction can also link itself to the main trace. Same thing happens when the backend returns the results or if the backend makes a different request to a different service. The trace ID header is what connects the services transactions. We've got a demo flashcards app built with Next.js, Prisma and PlanetScale. So we're going to implement distributed tracing on the update flashcard flow. Let's begin. First, let's install Sentry into the project. We're going to use the Next.js wizard to make our job easier. It'll ask us to pick which one of the Sentry projects we'd like to use in the flashcards app. So we're going to pick the flashcards project. The wizard then generates all the files for us. So now Sentry is correctly set up. We can run the project and check our Sentry dashboard to validate that the installation is actually good. All right, we can see data, so that means we're good. Let's implement distributed tracing now. Let's start on the client side. Since we're going to implement distributed tracing on the update flashcard functionality, let's open the flashcards hook file and start there. First, we need to obtain the current scope. Sentry's SDK automatically creates that for us. Then we create a transaction and give it a name. We'll then set the new transaction as the scope's span. And now we're ready to create spans. Let's make a mark span here. Mark spans don't have duration, so we can invoke the finish method immediately. Now let's make sure that we set the Sentry Trace header. By the way, we don't always need to do this. Particularly in Next.js, the SDK does it. We're doing it here to make the services interconnectivity obvious. All right, now let's jump on the backend. I'll open the flashcards API handler and start by importing Sentry. And just like before, we're going to obtain the current scope, but this time we won't create a new transaction. We're actually going to obtain it from the current scope instead. Now, since we have a transaction, we can start creating spans for every functionality we'd like to measure. Since we didn't create the new transaction, we don't need to manually finish it. The SDK will take care of that. Okay, so now we can go back to the client and finish creating spans after receiving the results. Additionally, we can add the Prisma integration in our Sentry server config file, so we can also instrument the Prisma queries. Okay, we should be good. Let's update a few cards and check our dashboard. Hey, look at that. We've got the whole trace, starting from the mark that we created on the client side, all the way to the backend and back to the client where we're serializing the response. We can even see the Prisma queries as well. Awesome. So now we can see which span takes too long to complete and zero in on it to figure out what the problem was. So there we go. Distributed tracing in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.